Hello, my name is Nate Blair, and I'm happy to be here today to present some research done by the National Renewable Energy Labs System Advisor Model Team, or our SAM team, uh, looking at different PV module databases and comparing them. Uh, this work was originally uh, predominantly performed by John Whitmore, uh, who was an intern with us here at NREL uh, last year. Myself, and then Janine Freeman, who is also part of the SAM team and an NREL employee. So let's get right to it. So if you're not familiar with the SAM model, um, it takes a, a variety of inputs, calculates the performance of a typical solar system, or we actually represent a multitude of technologies, um, and combines that performance estimate with financing, uh, utility rates, incentives, et cetera, to really come out with a variety of high-level um, economic metrics, such as the levelized cost of energy, the net present value payback, uh, as well as detailed hourly and even sub-hourly uh, performance outputs, um, as well as a detailed annual cash flow. And as you can see on this graphic, one of the things that goes into this uh, process is system specifications. And that's the area of the SAM uh, workflow that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and again, SAM provides a variety of outputs, annual outputs, monthly outputs, hourly outputs uh, for a variety of technologies. Um, and what we really want to get at today is looking at how these outputs are dependent upon um, the component, and in this case, the component inputs, and particularly PV module uh, inputs. So in the, over the last uh, several years, NREL has been performing various other validation studies of SAM, uh, as well as its relationship to other models. So uh, about a year ago, we compared SAM to nine real-world data sets. Um, and then this last year, we've been comparing SAM to PVSYS, PVSOL, uh, RET screen, as well as uh, comparing PVWATS against these same nine data sets. Uh, finally, it's not listed here, but we've also been using some major data from uh, some of the measurement companies, Locus Energy in particular, to look at SAM compared to 100 different uh, real-world uh, systems. And looking at the agreement, between what's simulated and what's actually measured. So then the question becomes, if you have good agreement, are the variations seen between these models and between the models in reality due to the algorithms of the models or due to the data inputs? And particularly when you're comparing the tools together, uh, is it the fact that we're using different data inputs or the algorithms themselves? Uh, it's believed that a large part of the variation uh, could be due to differences in definition of the parameters for certain modules that are common in multiple databases. And note that, uh, at least in the case of SAM, you're selecting a particular module from a list, say a SunPower 250-something module, um, and then uh, the, the actual detailed characteristics of that module are hidden away. Um, and so through this effort, we really want to be able to compare the characteristics of the different module libraries in each of these um, platforms, and um, and to figure out which one uh, to figure out if there's any variation in the characteristics that are being input into the model. We also hope to find out exactly which modules do these databases have in common. Um, you know, so we have a variety of different tools. Um, and they're serving different industries. And as we all know, the PV industry is moving quickly with lots of new module models coming out all the time uh, and older ones being retired quickly. There's a, a lot of uh, change in the industry. So looking at what um, modules are in common is also of interest to us. So what databases did we compare? Uh, we compared four different databases that we have access to and that use similar one diode models uh, to represent the module uh, we're comparing. So within the SAM model, we looked at two different databases, the Sandia module database 
and the CEC module database. We then uh, used uh, our purchase copies of PVSYS and PVSOL to look at the databases for PV modules for each of those tools. So what, tool, what modules are in common across all four of these databases? So basically there are 61 groups of modules are present in all four databases. And what we mean by a group is that the physical characteristics of the modules are identical, but oftentimes there's a, several different model numbers that represent the differences such as colors and bezel height and a variety of things that aren't really important to the performance but uh, have been differentiated by different model numbers. Um, and the reason that there are 61 groups of modules uh, in common, so basically 61 different model modules are common to all four of these databases. Um, the, the, the one that poses the biggest constraint on that number is really the Sandia module database. Um, it's uh, not as current. Um, and uh, so it's uh, representing modules that are a little bit older, um, and then it's a smaller size of a database as well. However, having these 61 different module models should be a statistically significant to look for any systematic changes between databases. I would add that if we were to do this work again, we might want to do a variety of different combinations um, to look at um, a larger number of common modules. So, for example, take out the comparison with the Sandia module database and um, perhaps compare more of the PVSYS versus the CEC database, both of which are significantly larger. So this is a list of um, module models uh, or groups of model modules, uh, module models that are common uh, to all four databases, and you can see that there's a number of different uh, manufacturers represented, um, from Aleo to Yingli, uh, with a number of uh, modules from Sanyo, Sharp, First Solar, and SunPower, and SunTech. Uh, so what variables were compared? So the Sandia module model, for example, takes over 30 characteristics that represents a module, um, and some of the models have only five or six characteristics. Um, none of the models, even though they all use a one diode model inside, none of the models, SAM, PVSYS, or PVSOL, use exactly the same algorithm. And so unfortunately, um, we can really only compare high-level characteristics of each module. So the characteristics that we were able to compare was the maximum power point voltage, the maximum power point current, the open circuit voltage, the short circuit current, and then the maximum power point power uh, as a multiplication of the voltage and current. Um, and this table shows for the four databases that we compared um, what some of the common variables could have been between the different databases. As you can see, it cuts down to just these four items that we uh, that I mentioned on the last slide, um, but a number of the databases have some additional um, data items that could be compared uh, in future work um, uh, if that was of interest. Um, I think particularly comparing the module areas would be of interest uh, for some of the models, um, and then the, you know the number of cells in the in the module and the number of cells in series. Um, and perhaps even the efficiency, but just um, looking at this at a, at a high level without doing the same sort of statistics that we did on the four highlighted in red, uh, we didn't see a significant variation between um, the databases for these other variables. And here are the results. And what we see is that um, uh, across the bottom that we have divided uh, the different um, modules, the 61 different module models, into four different groups. Um, Multi-crystalline silicon, monocrystalline silicon, thin film, and HIT silicon. Uh, and um, what you can see is that for each of the variables, the max power point voltage, open circuit voltage, max power point current, 
short circuit current and uh, max power point power in yellow, um, that there does seem to be some variation uh, between the different um, technologies represented in these databases, uh, with thin film having slightly higher variation uh, than some of the other ones. And I think um, we've uh, got some theories about why that might be, um, that the, you know, the thin film technologies have changed over time, and so certain databases were probably updated at one point, and then uh, the characteristics were slightly modified at a later time, for example. So what are our conclusions? A minimal number of DIT modules are in common between these four key databases. So just 61 out of potentially thousands of them. Uh, the individual module variants, um, which uh, are in the appendix slides, which we'll flip to in a second, show that certain variables for a few panels have more than a 3% variation, but less than 3.5 standard deviation. So um, while there is a little bit of variation, it's it does not seem to be um, overly significant. And other system areas of variation within the modules can be significantly more than 2% and would be the larger source of error between the various tools. Um, so when the errors are averaged within the technology types, as I just showed, uh, the standard deviation between these modules is less than 1% typically. That's the yellow bar on the previous slide. Um, and that there's some increase in variance of some of the variables with film technologies, but still less than 1.5% on average. So if we were to continue to do this work or follow up on this work in the future, uh, what we would want to do is use these variables um, and the other characteristics perhaps uh, within the model to calculate IV curves for each module produced and really try to get after um, the variation across the entire IV curve. Um, but at this point, what we've found is that it doesn't look like the, a significant amount of the error between models really comes from uh, the variance between these databases. Let me go to the appendix. Um, there are three slides in the appendix. Each one represents a, a chunk uh, of the modules th that were studied and shows the variation uh, for each module between the four databases. Um, so you'll see some peaks are again over 3%, uh, but most are considerably uh, less than 2%. This is the second slide. Again, some are common and don't have any variation at all, and so they are uh, sitting at zero and some have minor variations, um, but again, predominantly 2% or less. And then this is the last slide. Note that the scale has changed slightly, um, and again, that uh, the variation is less than 2% and often less than 1%. So again, the conclusions are that we don't feel that there is significant variation between the modules uh, in, in terms of the database data itself. Um, and uh, I think we can conclude that the variation between the tools is, is in a large part due to the actual algorithms and treatment of other inputs such as weather, shading, uh, and other loss terms. Thank you very much, um, and please uh, join us for other SAM webinars in the future.